One of the massive spiritual influencers out there today is Eckhart Tolle, or Tola, and probably his best known book would be The Power of the Now. If you've ever heard somebody say, you gotta live in the now, just live in the now, that probably goes back to Tolle, who popularized the idea. So I read his book, I was curious, what's the big deal about the now? And should Christians really be concerned? For Tolle, living in the now is living with a heightened sense of awareness or consciousness of the present moment. Whereas many people naturally dwell on their past or worry about the future, Tolle says that we don't need to do that. In fact, we shouldn't do that. Instead, live in the power of the now. He provides these meditation exercises like focusing on every act of inhaling and exhaling, every sound you hear, every step you take, just be hyper-present with yourself. He compares the experience to that of a thrill seeker. When you seek thrills, you're really seeking the now because the adrenaline from jumping off a cliff, it's like time slows down, you feel every second of it, and it feels good. <laughs> For some, I think of that common theme in the Pixar movie, Soul, where Joe Gardner and others get lost in music or whatever passion project they're involved with. Tole says, let's practice doing that in our regular rhythms of life. Doing so will reduce stress, anxiety, anger, and frustration. It will increase patience. In fact, it will make patience irrelevant because you're not waiting for anything. You're just living in the now. Regrets and worries become irrelevant because you're not living in the past with its regrets or worrying about the future. None of that stuff really even exists. Time is an illusion. Only the present moment exists, and that's where you truly are. You can see how there is a therapeutic appeal to all this. And considering how many people are in desperate need of mental health, it's no surprise that Tolle's self-help teachings have spread like butter. This might come as a surprise, but I'm not against the idea of somebody being mindful of their present moment. It seems like a vain endeavor, and I think there are better ways to address mental health, but that's not why I'm doing this video. My concern as a Christian is the worldview that Tolle is wrapping around this whole concept. It's the worldview that governs his reasoning for why he thinks it's important to live in the now. To give an example, look at what he says on page 12. Those who have not found their true wealth which is the radiant joy of being and the deep unshakable peace that comes with it, are beggars. Even if they have great material wealth, they are looking outside for scraps of pleasure or fulfillment, for validation, security, or love, while they have a treasure within that not only includes all those things, but is infinitely greater than anything the world can offer. For anyone who claims to be a Christian, that statement should be very alarming because that right there is a false gospel. Remember that the gospel has to do with the ultimate problem of our world and the ultimate solution to that problem. According to the Bible, the ultimate problem is sin, which separates us from a personal God and even makes us condemned according to his righteous judgment. The solution to this problem was that because of God's love for us, he became man in the person of Jesus Christ. He died on the cross and was resurrected. And because of that, we can find forgiveness and restoration with God. But according to Tolle, the ultimate problem of our world is not sin, which condemns us. It's unconsciousness or unenlightenment, which creates misery. And it's not Jesus who saves us. It's a power inside ourselves which, as you will soon learn, is unlocked by focusing on the now. It's also not about being reunited with a personal creator, God of love and holiness and righteousness and compassion. It's about having radiant joy of being. What's being? Well, on the next page, he says, being is the eternal, ever-present one life beyond the myriad forms of life that are subject to birth and death. However, being is not only beyond, but also deep within every form as its innermost invisible and indestructible essence. This means that it is accessible to you now as your own deepest self, your true nature. But don't seek to grasp it with your mind. Don't try to understand it. You can know it only when the mind is still. So it's clear that this book is not just about a mental exercise with a couple of nice health benefits. This book is explicitly teaching a whole new worldview that is contrary to the Christian gospel. Yes, Tolle will quote the Bible occasionally, like when Jesus encouraged us not to worry about tomorrow. 
but these similarities do not exist where they matter the most. Issues of sin, heaven, hell, God, and salvation. I'm not trying to be mean about this. I'm genuinely concerned. Gatorade and rat poison may both contain water, but one of them quenches thirst and the other one kills you. We've got to recognize the concern in Paul's voice when he said these words in Galatians 1, 6 through 8. I am shocked that you are turning away so soon from God, who called you to himself through the loving mercy of Christ. You are following a different way that pretends to be the good news, but is not the good news at all. You are being fooled by those who deliberately twist the truth concerning Christ. Let God's curse fall on anyone, including us or even an angel from heaven, who preaches a different kind of good news than the one we preached to you. One of my other concerns with Tolle's teachings is a way that it conditions people to think about truth. In the preface, he makes a statement that really stuck out to me. He says, anyone who is still totally identified with the voice in their head, the stream of involuntary and incessant thinking, will inevitably fail to see what the power of the now is all about. Reading on, you'll see him present these concepts and insist that you shouldn't think too hard about them. Rather, just allow yourself to feel these statements and you will simply know that it's true. Whenever somebody is worried that thinking about their viewpoint will lead to rejection, don't you suppose that maybe the reason is because their viewpoint isn't good? If somebody is insisting that you should accept my teachings but don't think too hard about it, does that not sound a little... <laughs> Sus? Like, what if you sold a used car to me for $2,500 and I handed you a wad of cash to pay for the car, but I said to you, hey, don't count the money. Just look inside of yourself and you will believe that it's truly the right amount. <laughs> if I were you, I would duck out of that deal fast. I think there are some true beliefs out there that are naturally understood rather than established through reasoning. They are self-evident and we just know that they are true. For instance, I exist. 4 plus 8 equals 12. Something cannot be both true and false in the same kind of way at the same time. We could call these properly basic beliefs. Essentially, Tolle is trying to push his content up to that level, but anyone who gives it a moment of thought will realize that his teachings do not belong up there. They are not properly basic beliefs. The stuff he gets into about consciousness, oneness, being, positive and negative energies, the untrue self, the purpose of life, the true meaning of the Bible, all of these grandiose statements, rarely does Tolle tell us why we should think this way. My honest impression is that he simply expects his readers to quiet their minds and follow along. Practically all of the evil we have observed in human history happened because people felt that they were right when in fact they were wrong. Be careful when people give you an entire package for how to understand the mysteries of life and they tell you to accept it based on mere feeling. I worry that people are attracted to these teachings, misinterpreting their attraction as a mark of truth, when in fact, the attractiveness is a result of the novelty of his teachings, the, the trendiness of pushing against a Western mindset, and maybe that it's kind of fun and adventurous. I know there are spiritual teachers in Tolle's network who do focus more on reasoning, but that tends to be an exception. My approach as a Christian is different. I don't expect people to believe blindly in my stuff. I want to share why I believe just as much as what I believe, and I leave it to my audience to consider the matters themselves. I want people to think about what I'm saying. I'm not afraid if they do. I, I want people to ask questions. I want people to go deep. Sometimes they'll think I'm crazy, and they'll let me know it in the comments, but at least they're thinking. In fact, Jesus, would often pose these questions to force people to think deeper because he knew that those who are thinking rightly would recognize that he is the only savior of this world. Speaking of which, is Jesus really any different from us? Or was he simply a human with great wisdom or enlightenment? Next week's video will be all about that. If you're watching this video a week or more after publication, you can go watch that video right now. So uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.